show or so to show you a little bit of old Nottingham. Now I'm going to take a chance and open it again. Shout if it starts to rain. It's been open and shut like a yo-yo all morning. It's much more pleasant with it open though, isn't it? Okay. Here we go then. We start off at Nottingham Castle itself. Perhaps a little bit disappointing to tourists. Kids a bit disappointed because they like to see cannons and battlements and things like that, don't they? We actually lost our castle as a result of the English Civil War. And the building we have now was, is a stately home that was built by the Duke of Newcastle, which I'll explain to you in due course. But let's go back, right back to the beginning. The one date that every English schoolboy knows is 1066. The Battle of Hastings, when the Normans invaded England and were successful and Harold was shot in the eye and all the rest of it. William the Conqueror, after his successful conquest, was travelling north and looking for a suitable place for a castle in the Midlands. It's from 1252. A little bit of it are left. The some of the stonework at the gatehouse and also this round tower dates from that time. Now, to give you some idea of the sort of magnificence of the buildings on this side, just look at that storyboard there, where you can when that chap moves. That's Richard's Tower, which was in that corner, and in front of it are the State Apartments. The Richard referred to is Richard III. He was the last Plantagenet king who fought the Wars of the Roses. He was the one with the hump on his back. I don't know how up on English history you are. Um, but to give you some idea, that tower and their state apartments were just one small corner. You see the round bulge on the left-hand side of the key plan. Well, Richard's Tower is just that small black bit there. So it really was a fantastic building at its peak. They say it would have been at least a good rival for Windsor Castle. And you've actually come at quite an interesting time. Because can you see the bouquet on the floor there? That's been put there by the Richard III Society. Richard III was a maligned king. He seemed to have picked up a lot of bad reputation, but actually he was a fair administrator and by no means our worst king. Certainly not thought so by the Richard III Society who put that there to commemorate his death because he rode from this castle in 1485 to fight the last battle of the War of the Roses when he was killed on Bosworth Field in Leicestershire. And at that time, the British throne passed from the Plantagenets to the Tudors, Henry Tudor becoming the first Tudor King of England, Henry VII. 200 years later, in 1642, Charles I started the English Civil War on this site. He raised his standard on Standard Hill, which is at the back, very close to where we got on the bus, to summon his royalist troops, to summon his royalist troops to start the Civil War. Didn't do very well because he rapidly lost possession of the castle to the Roundheads. Can you remember what the English Civil War was about? It was basically the struggle between Parliament and the King as to who should rule the country. There were the Roundheads, or Parliamentarians, led by Oliver Cromwell, and the Royalists, or Cavaliers, led by King Charles I. Eventually, the Roundheads were successful, and for the first time, we didn't have a king or a queen. We had a Lord Protector for a few years, Oliver Cromwell. But that battle, that war started here. The Roundheads, who took possession of the castle, successfully defended it for the whole of the period of the Civil War. And at the end of the war, Charles I was executed, head chopped off at Tyburn Hill. Let's out the person on the microphone. He had his head chopped off at Tyburn Hill, and in 1651, Act of Parliament ruled that Nottingham Castle should be pulled to, the, pulled to the ground because it was considered to be a place of likely rebellion. I'll talk about this building in, in a bit, but first I want to go right to the edge and so you can realise why William the Conqueror picked this location in the first instant. And what a fantastic place for a castle it is. It's okay. 
From here we can see four counties, Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire, Leicestershire and Lincolnshire, and a range of about 10 miles. The power station there is 10 miles away, at Ratcliffe on Soar. To our right there, Nottingham University and the University Hospital, and look just above the trees there, to the left of the flats. Can you see the turret of what looks like a stately home? Just above the line of the trees. Can you see it? Or are you having difficulty? See the tall blocks of flats? Well, follow the line of the trees for about the width of the two blocks of flats, and it's just there, poking up. It's got a flagpole in the middle. Got it? It's called Woolerton Hall, and it stands in the middle of Woolerton Park, and it's a very fine Tudor mansion. You must visit that while you're in Nottingham. A few other landmarks. The modern buildings here are the offices of the Inland Revenue, your IRS, <laughs> and they've not left themselves short, because in the middle there you can see their sports and social club, the thing that looks like a circus big top. To the left, the two Nottingham football grounds. The one with the red lattice work on the top is the city ground where Forest play, which is actually in the county. And to the left, the one with the two yellow stripes is the ground where Notts County play, which is actually in the city. It's a crazy situation brought about by the fact that between the two, the River Trent runs, and the River Trent is the city boundary. The Trent Bridge itself is just behind the church to the right of the white building where the cricket ground is and the site of a bridge over the Trent since 911. But prior to then, one of the reasons that Nottingham grew in this area is because it's the only or the closest place to the sea that it was possible to ford the Trent. And in front of us there is Wilf 